Hey, Coach Duffy here. Today I'd like to go over the posterior pelvic tilt. Um, I've gone over the anterior pelvic tilt before. I'd like to go over the, the exact opposite. Okay, what, what's occurring here is, if you can imagine your pelvis. Here is the anterior pelvic tilt. When you're here, it's anteriorly rotated so that the posterior pelvic tilt is just shifted the other way so that if you had a belt on, the, the belt buckle would actually be tilted kind of upwards um, and you know the, the hips are kind of really pushed forward. Um, you don't really see this quite as much as the anterior pelvic tilt, uh, but, uh, but I'd like to go over a, a bunch of different exercises, stretches, mobility, strengthening exercises, all, all these different things that, that are going to help you, um, you know, if you have this, this uh, imbalance in your hips. Um, Things to, to look at that, that you might not know, um, you're going to really have some uh, tight hamstrings, uh, some tight glutes, and your lower abs are going to be really tight too. If you can imagine, you know, if your quads um, are, are coming in to the hips and then your lower abs are real sore, or real tight rather, you can imagine that the pull on your pelvis, so that, that makes sense, and then um, in contrast, the back of the legs, the hamstrings are going to be real tight as well. Um, the, the weakest muscles that you're going to run into are those quadricep muscles, um, iliopsoas, uh, and then your, your lumbar erectors as well, your, uh, the muscles that run up and down your back um, to keep yourself uh, upright. Um, some possible indicators, uh, we already talked about that, that buckle facing up. Um, if you're, if you're kind of like leaning back, uh, and you'll see this a lot with people in motion. So if you're, if you're walking or if you catch someone on the street that has a little bit of a, a lean back, um, take a look at their hips. I guarantee they're going to have that posterior pelvic tilt. Um, if you've got a history of hamstring pulls, that's a, that's a pretty good indicator that, uh, that you've got a little bit of a posterior tilt going on. Um, or, or if you've got significantly tight hamstrings um, or low back. Uh, you know, a lot of people do have tight low back and tight hamstrings just from inactivity or a sedentary lifestyle, but, uh, but that's a really good indicator for a posterior pelvic tilt. Um, I'd like to go into some exercises now, uh, uh, some dynamic flexibility I'm going to start with. Um, a great one to do is, is a squatting motion, so you're going to squat down, staying way back on your heels. Once you get to your full depth, you're going to go ahead and grab your toes and then stand up and get those legs as straight as possible. Now, for someone that has that posterior pelvic tilt, straightening those legs out is not going to happen, but it will after some time. So just keep that squat going and then stand up, just getting as tall as you can with those legs, as straight as you can, straightening all the way up like that. This next one is a, uh, I like to call it the figure four stretch. I'm going to find something to hold on to. Uh, just make sure that it's, that it's really sturdy. A, uh, you know, like a bed post or, or some sort of column in your, in your house. Um, let's, let's go right here. Get this ball out of the way. So as you're holding on to something, you're going to cross one ankle over the knee. And you can either hold on to this, to this foot here or have both hands on whatever you, you're holding on to. And then you're going to squat down, feeling a real good stretch in the, in the glute. And then come on all the way back up. Stretch down. Then coming all the way back up. And obviously, you do it on both sides. Um, usually, around eight to ten repetitions on that one is good. Uh, the next one I'd like to go into is uh, is a little bit of a motor control type of exercise. A um, little bit of strength involved in it, but but definitely some flexibility and, and movement as well. So, this first one's going to be a step up type of a motion to where you're you're really working the quads a lot, but you're also working the glutes and hamstrings. So this is good for, for total body leg strength, but uh, working that quad of this leg here, going down and try to touch your heel. And obviously the higher the step is here, uh, the harder it's gonna be. So start out with a smaller step if you need to. And if you need to hold on to something too, that that's, it also works, but you should try to progress to something like this. Touch and up, touch and up. And then the same thing the other side, obviously. Um, next one, a stability ball hip bridge. So here's this stability ball. You're going to roll yourself out so that your head and your shoulders are on the ball. 
Feet are flat on the ground, hands across the chest. Touch your rear to, to the ground and then come all the way up and then squeeze the rear at the top. Touch, squeeze, touch, squeeze. About 15 to 20 repetition on, the, on that one is good. Um, next, I'd like to get into just some regular uh, good old fashioned strength. So we're talking about uh, you know stuff with weights, um, stuff with barbells, dumbbells, things like that. Progress to that though. You can start just body weight, um, such exercises as, as the squat, as I showed you before with the straight legs, but just, just a simple squat motion like this, coming all the way down, good deep squats, and then the deadlift as well. I'm gonna show you that one with some weight. Um, the squat you can do with some weight too. Um, you know, with a squat, you can go right behind the head with the bar and that same good squatting action. Down and up, and down and up. Okay, for the deadlift now, having that bar up against the shins, having a good, strong, tight, straight, low back and all the way up through the shoulder blades. And then you're gonna stand up nice and tall, making sure that the shoulders are in back of the bar at the top. Make sure you start with light weight with this. And I would uh, make sure that someone's watching you for proper form. This is an easy one to, uh, to have bad form with, so just be careful with that. That's your deadlift. Rep ranges anywhere from 10 to 20 on those movements. Um, some static stretches now. So static meaning just staying in place. Good thing, good to do after your workout, after you work out for uh, any cardio or, or weights or anything like that. Just to hold the stretch for this hamstring reaching forward and obviously the same thing on the other side I'm going to call this next one an S stretch because that's kind of the position that your legs are in maybe it's more like a Z whatever you want you're going to be on the ground like this front leg crossed other leg back the other way what you're going to try to do is whatever leg is out front you're going to try to reach with the opposite arm to try to get it as flat as possible. This will stretch those, those tight glutes and tight low back. And then you'll just do it the other side. Last, I'd like to show you a couple things with the foam roller here. Some uh, self-myofascial release. Again, those hamstrings are gonna be really tight and the best way to hit the hamstrings with a foam roller up on an elevated surface like this. And then you're just rolling back and forth on those hamstrings. Make sure you get both sides, inside, outside, and then right in the middle as well. Hit both sides with that. And then your last one, getting those tight glutes rolled out as well. So, so important. Get yourself seated on top of the foam roller. You're gonna get that figure four stretch that I showed you before, but you're on the foam roller now. And now we're getting that glute stretched out. And again, try to hit different angles. Lean to the side, lean the other way, go down a little bit lower, get all the way top up into your low back. All really good things. Guaranteed to uh, really help you with that posterior pelvic tilt. So all those stretches and strengthening exercises, good luck with that. Thanks.